In this video I'll demonstrate how to apply some basic labels to polygons in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, what I've added here, uh, it's this data set called NE10M Africa. This is from the Natural Earth Data uh, website. It's a very good place for getting data sets uh, for country boundaries and things like that. Um, if we right click just briefly and look at the attribute table, uh, we can see some of the rows and columns that are available. So um, this has a lot of information about the country, its name, who has sovereignty, uh, the formal name, uh, things like population and GDP. We're not going to use all of that here, um, but what's important whenever you make labels is to look at the attribute table and choose which uh, field is going to hold the, the label text. So for us, we're, our label text is going to be driven by this field, which is called name. Um, so that'll be important once we, once we create the labels. Now, if we just want to make some real quick labels, we can right-click uh, layer and say label. That will give us just all the default settings, but for uh, labels, there's tons and tons of settings and options. And usually, the default ones aren't what you want. For example, a lot of countries have a lot of little islands uh, that consist of many polygons, and each one is labeled. If we don't want those labeled, then we've got to go in and change some of the more advanced properties. So to do that, uh, right-click the layer name and go to labeling properties. Uh, now a panel opens up over here on the right that uh, it is actually holds many many options uh, because you have three choices up at the top and then you have buttons down below. Um, we're not going to deal with the, the class one here. The only important thing for you to recognize is that here is that name field and if we wanted to make a more complex label that was a combination of several fields uh, we could change that here. Um, and by default the software looked for a name field and found it and that's what it used. So if you have any kind of field in your data set with name in it, that will probably be used by default. Um, but here we could change the label so that it can be based on any one of these other fields. Um, we can change the symbol. Uh, this would be the, like, the font size and style that would be used for the text. Um, only thing I'm going to do here is maybe change the color to be a uh, real dark green. Um, this is just so it blends with the other symbols that I've got here and labels will go a little bit to the back in the visual hierarchy. That's probably okay if, I would, if I'm going to be putting a thematic layer on top of that. Maybe I do want the labels to hide a little bit. Um, and then if we go to this position uh, menu up here, uh, we've got some real important buttons. One of them is conflict resolution. So what do we do if there's labels crashing into each other or other issues? Um, one thing we can do here is remove the duplicate labels. This is where you change from do not remove to uh, remove all. And so now our map looks uh, a whole lot cleaner. This is pretty nice. Um, but we could choose if we want to repeat the intervals at or the labels at some kind of interval of number of units. Um, you can choose a little buffer around the label to make sure the other labels don't come too close. Uh, things like that. There are many, many options for uh, conflict detection as well as fitting strategy. So here's all the options about when to stack the text, uh, what kind of separators would uh, be applied. Uh, you can see that the software actually did stack up text for us automatically, which was kind of nice. So we don't even have to think about that here. Uh, it just did it for us. Um, there are options for reducing the font size uh, if needed. So if a font doesn't fit, uh, you can abbreviate based on certain rules, and then you can even order these strategies. So many of these strategies like font reduction and abbreviation, we talked about in the lesson as ways to, um, to deal with conflict. And um, you can order the, the ways in which you want those strategies to, to take effect, which is nice. Um, and then here's just some more placement options. Uh, if you're labeling things like points, uh, you can choose uh, where the label gets placed around the point. Uh, you can do stuff like this, so um, uh, you can have the labels follow the shape of the polygon. It doesn't help us here very much, but it might be useful in other situations. Also, if we were zoomed way into a boundary and we wanted the label just to follow the boundary, uh, we could choose boundary placement. Um, it's not as helpful in this situation, um, but you'll see here uh, it would be useful if we were making a map that was zoomed like way in on this border and we just wanted the label to, to follow the boundary like that. So we'll go back to where we were here and maybe set this uh, these labels back to their regular placement. 
So uh, many different options here for the labels, too many to get into, they're, they're very advanced. Uh, what you want to do at this point is get the labels as close to what you want as possible, they're not going to be perfect, and then you'll convert them into annotation, which means uh, labels that you can have control over, move around, you can change individual label font size and rotation yourself, so that you as a cartographer can really grab the label and place it where you want. That takes a lot of work and time to do. So that's why you're trying to get the automated placement here as good as possible. One last thing that you want to do is go down here and round off the scale. Uh, so we're close to 1 to 40 million here. So uh, I'll do that. And then I'm going to right click the map here and say set reference scale. So now our labels are locked into this size. If you were to zoom in, uh, you would see the text gets larger. And uh, it looks a little crazy at this point. If you zoom out, it uh, looks really small, that's fine. Um, and if you go exactly to that 1 to 40 million, which uh, we just need to type in here again, uh, we'll be exactly at the scale at which we originally determined these labels. And that's where we want to move them around. Uh, if you're making a paper map, this is especially important, uh, just so you can always stay locked onto the scale that your viewers are going to see uh, while you're designing the map.